I'm an intern at the refuge here, um, and I've been working on invasive uh, plant control. Invasive plants have adverse effects on wildlife and native plants. They are introduced by humans intentionally or accidentally, and are able to thrive by outcompeting native plants. Invasive species have contributed to the decline of 42% of the U.S. endangered and threatened species. In the U.S., more than 100 million acres of land are infested with invasive plants. So like we did with this group, we kind of chose priority um, habitats that are good to focus on. Well basically we picked a dogwood habitat which is really good for migratory birds um, and then a sandy habitat which is really good for bees and so we were focusing on removing invasives from there. A key management technique to control invasives is to eliminate them from the area they have invaded. To prevent the invasive species from growing back, John will apply a 50-50 solution of herbicide and water to the stump of the plant. But after an area is cleared of invasives, it is important to regrow the area with native species that can be resilient and provide ecological benefits to the area. In our last project, we were able to replant an area that was occupied with Japanese knotweed and replace it with native grass seeds. I think it's very important to involve the community. Um, that's kind of what the Fish and Wildlife Service does and what national refuges are, is for the public. To get them involved, to know what we're doing is very important so they can support it and enjoy this work that we do, keeping you know areas like this uh, conserved um, so you can enjoy it. Through our volunteer project, we saw positive results of our time and work. Volunteering allowed all of us to experience something new and gain hands-on experience in environmental conservation. After our time with a refuge, we all felt a sense of accomplishment and purpose. Giving a little bit of your time can make a positive impact on your local community and the planet.